Good morning. Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Brian Novak. A uh, couple of announcements. Mr. Becker is having a Lego STEM camp this week, Monday through Friday, 9 to 10.30. Uh, $10, ages 5 to 8. So ages 5 to 8, if you're interested in Lego STEM camp, I'm sure Mr. Becker would love to have you uh, this Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 10.30. We have an elders meeting Monday night at 7. We have school registration or book night on Wednesday from 4 to 7. That's Wednesday, this Wednesday, 4 to 7. And the Board of Parish Ed meets this Wednesday as well at 7 o'clock. And Lucas had an announcement. First of all, I don't know if you saw it, but the Cubs are officially six games behind the Brewers, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enjoy this while I can. to the St. John's Estate Fund for sponsoring this um, to just relax after a busy week on a Friday but also kind of enjoy fellowship um, as well. night. Um, you'll come in on Seminary Place. That will be the only entrance open. Or right hand side as you're coming. Order walk. There should be parking back behind the chapel. So then all you would have to do is just kind of walk through the, the open field and then you'll see the uh, KFUL radio tower and then we are right behind that out in married housing out in that grassy area for the cookout. We uh, do hope to see everyone there this coming Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and we'll begin our service with our opening hymn, Hymn 906, A Day of Rest and Gladness, Hymn 906.
please stand? follow the service, Divine Service Setting 1, found on page 151, if you want to find along in the hymnal, page 151. We begin our service as we do all our services, in the remembrance of our baptism and our triune God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And hear those great words that Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing our intro it from Psalm 91. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord.
For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray together the collect of the day. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, your mercy attends us all our days. Be our strength and support amid the wearisome changes of this world. And at life's end, grant us your promised rest and the full joys of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading for this, the sixth Sunday, after Pentecost comes to us from the book of Zechariah, the ninth chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O, doubt, o daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem. And the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea, and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, be, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare I, that I will restore you to double. This is the word of the Lord. We continue with our gradual. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments, how unscrutable his ways. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Our epistle reading comes from Romans chapter 7, beginning at the 14th verse. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am of the flesh, sold under sin. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. 
So now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells in me that is in my flesh. For I have the desire to do what is right, but not the ability to carry it out. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I keep on doing. Now if I do what I want, I do not want, is no, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I do right, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inner being, but I see in my members another law waging war against the law of my mind and making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the Alleluia and the verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 11th chapter. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of our Lord. And in unison, and we recite together our common faith found in the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us and, and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our hymn of the day, hymn 707. Oh, that the Lord would guide my ways, hymn 707.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Today's sermon text is from our epistle reading, just read from the book of Romans, chapter 7, under the title, It's a Struggle. It is a struggle, you know. Life, that is. Having to wake up each morning having to get to work or school on time, having to get to church each week. Not to mention the countless other tasks that we need to do each day. Oh, and don't forget the most important item, keeping all the commandments perfectly. This may lead to us feeling stressed out, by the huge weight we're carrying upon our shoulders every day. At the end of the day, as we lay our heads down on our pillows, we likely might think about what we did that day or have to do the next morning. All to just wake up tomorrow and do the same thing all over again. It's a struggle. As I'm standing here talking after reading that, I can see the change happening in your expressions on your faces. The smiles and happiness that we came into church with slowly starting to dissipate. It can be depressing because we start to think about and remember the things we need to get done. Yes, life is definitely a struggle. Let's face it, you've done it, I've done it. We've had those conversations with a boss, spouse, or significant other, or one of your children. Conversation starts like any normal conversation. Then the conversation may become a bit heated. As it continues, a thought enters your mind. And as quickly as it enters your mind, you commit to yourself that you're not going to say the words that entered your mind. You better not say those words. We all know those words. The words that we've said that we'll never live down. Those words would never be forgotten. The speed of thought is an amazing thing because in just those few milliseconds, your brain goes from thinking to processing to acting. Before we even recognize it, it's too late. 
The words we didn't want to say came right out of our mouth. We can't take them back. We become aggravated and frustrated because we didn't want to say the words we said in the first place. It's due to our sinful nature. Because of sin, we struggle and we fail to do the good that we seek to do. The bad we seek not to do is exactly what we end up doing. We think to ourselves, what was I thinking? Why did I say the very words I was trying to avoid saying? Why couldn't I just keep my mouth shut? And then maybe if you said something to your spouse, we start thinking with our logical side of our brain, hopefully, and we think, hey, you know I was just kidding, right? Or, "Uh uh-oh, my spouse heard what I actually said. Run! Or maybe if I call the police, they'll understand my situation, having said what I did to my wife or spouse, and they'll let me enter the witness protection program. As a famous intellectual thinker of his time, Mr. Homer Simpson said, Don't! As St. Paul would say, wretched man that I am. It's a struggle. The Apostle Paul was no different than you or I. He also faced struggles in his life. He struggled with sin. He was persecuted for what he believed and taught. He was stoned for his faith. They thought they had killed him, but they were wrong. He lived. We don't know how Paul died. Now looking at today's text, some scholars say that Paul was speaking about his life before he became a Christian, when he was still Saul of Tarsus. Yet he became a Christian before he became a Christian. He was a man of the law. He knew he was a sinner. But he didn't know that he was spiritually dead. We can agree with these scholars because of what happened when he encountered Christ on that road to Damascus. That encounter would prove to be a life-changing encounter for Paul. Paul became a different person. He was baptized. He repented of his sins. He was a devout follower of Christ. Now Paul understood that he wasn't just a sinner, but he was also spiritually alive. Today's text provides us with a mature Paul. His eyes were opened. He saw reality. He came to understand that being a Christian didn't mean he would always do the right things. He began to realize that because of sin, he would always fail and fall short of the glory of the Lord. Paul not only wanted to serve, but he wanted to please God. Paul wanted to achieve good for the glory of God. He wanted to spread the gospel. He wanted to share the love of Christ with all people. His sinful nature wouldn't let him do it. It's a struggle. Like Paul, we struggle in our daily lives. A couple examples we struggle with. Addictions, alcohol, drugs, pornography, all sinful desires of the flesh all things we fight and struggle with to maintain control of our lives. Eating. We know we should follow a healthy diet, 
less processed food, less sugar, more green leafy vegetables, and eating in moderation. But we're tempted and struggle with the consumption of fast foods, sugary snacks, and overindulgence. And then there's screen time, whether it be your phone, TV, computer. Do you limit your time on your div dig digital devices? Visit websites you know you shouldn't be. Do you compare yourself to the snippets of videos that you see on Facebook or other media? We need to set an example for ourselves, others, and for our children. Put down the phone, shut off the TV, use the time to read part of the Bible. Oh no, I can't do that. I might actually miss something important on social media. But what about missing the message of salvation given to us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and revealed in the Gospels? Just a few examples we struggle with daily. Sin and evil try to convince us that these are the right ways to live. But they're not, because they keep us away from God's word, from prayer, and from having a relationship with God. It's a struggle. We can learn. How can we learn from Paul's struggle? Well, Paul didn't give up. Through the difficulties and frustrations he faced, Paul not, didn't stop. No, he kept striving to live according to God's perfect law. Even though he realized he was incapable of achieving the good he sought, he still kept fighting. We shouldn't give up either. Don't just throw in the towel when times get tough, and they will. No, keep pushing yourself forward. Try to make strides forward. Just like Paul, we know in this earthly life we will never reach perfection. Just because we're Christians doesn't mean we should expect our lives to be better than anyone else's. However, we should expect more and better things from ourselves because we are Christians. It's a struggle. In today's reading, Paul states, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? The answer is Jesus Christ. He won our struggle with sin. He knows our struggles with sin. He struggled with the temptation of sin. But on that cross, he took on all of our sins. He suffered and died. But that's not the end. No, he accomplished much more. He was resurrected from the dead. He conquered sin, death, and the devil. He brings all who believe and trust in him as their Lord and Savior into a loving relationship with God the Father. And one day, he will come again and reunite us in body and soul to live with him for all eternity. Christ also delivers us through the waters of baptism, through the water in God's word. Baptism daily drowns our old sin-filled Adam and allows a new Adam to emerge. This new Adam allows us to live before God in all righteousness and purity forever. So, think about it. When you have that heated conversation, when those, you shouldn't, those words that you shouldn't say come out of your mouth, when you're frustrated, aggravated, and you feel you've reached the end of your rope, and you're struggling because of your sin, 
who do you look to? We look to Jesus Christ, our one true Redeemer, to deliver us from our body of death. Most importantly, we give thanks to God the Father for delivering his one and only Son to deliver us from our bodies of death. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. At this time, before we go to our Lord in prayer, I ask that our offering be brought forward as we sing the offertory on page 159, 160. As we go to our Lord and Savior in prayer, we pray for all those in need, those in need of healing and comfort, for our military personnel and our emergency personnel, and for the whole Church of God. I invite you to stand for prayer. Almighty God, you ensure that the birds are fed and the lilies clothed in splendor. Deliver us from worry and consolation with the consolation that you know what we need and that for Jesus' sake we are of much more value than they. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, fill our homes with your word and grace. Be the companion of those who are alone. Strengthen husbands and wives. Bless parents as they catechize their children. Let them all find refuge in you, and so preserve them from every plague and evil. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, be with all those who are weary and heavy laden with tribulations of this life. Give comfort to all who are dealing with burdens, especially Eunice, Kenneth, Richard, Darlene, Joan, Judy, Ruth, David, Pastor Cohen, Sherry, Brian, Marcy, Zach, Sarah, Ashlyn, Ava, Gary, Roger, Layla, Velma, Kevin, Dolores, Kathy, Gary, Lori, Elmer, Pastor Honaki's wife, Heather, Pat, Velma, Carl, Linda, Bill, Cash, all who are impacted by the recent storms and all who are going through trials and tribulations in their lives and all impacted by the war and unrest in this world. And for all those in need of safety, for the safety of our firefighters, police officers, emergency personnel, first responders, those who have served and are currently serving in our nation's armed forces, and all those who mourn the death of loved ones, including the family of Austin Gagel, the youngest grandchild of Eunice Gagel, at his sudden, sudden passing on Wednesday. Console them with the knowledge that your yoke is easy and your burden light, and that in you they will find rest for their souls. Lord, in your mercy, God of mercy, you set those imprisoned on account of their sin to bear their sentence as a joyful custody of hope. 
remember the incarcerated, preserve them from greater evil, and foster in them repentance and trust in your grace. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks to you, O Lord, for all the saints who, by your grace, sought your kingdom and righteousness above all other treasures. We pray that you would preserve us also in repentance and Christ's righteousness until we stand before you in glory. Lord, in your mercy, ruler of the nations, until you at last cut off the war horse and the chariot forever. Give our nation's leaders wisdom and integrity to preserve peace, promote what is good, and defend against violence and wickedness. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you know we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>